Bible is the inspired word of God. That means it was breathed into by God. The words of the Bible were given to man by the Holy Ghost. The authors who wrote them down would call them authors, but the true author is God. The men who wrote the books of the Bible, the Bible down tell us so themselves, that the Holy Ghost gave the words to them. That's why we call it the Word of God, because it comes from God. God wrote the Bible, every book of it. So, when God used the Holy Spirit to tell men to write the Bible, there was no history until then? And why did God reveal the Bible in distinct stages? The Quran and the Book of Mormon are also the inspired word of God revealed to man. I'm confused, Neff. Which one do I believe? And God has told us in the Bible that evolution is false. You nearly said true there, didn't you, Neffy? That's because deep down you know what is true. From the time we are a little children we are told that evolution is true that the Bible is mean merely parables and it's allegorical and it can't be taken literally that's because the literal version is at conflict both internally and with reality I like reality Neff and so should you it's one of Satan's lies you or anybody else have yet to prove God let alone Satan and science has demonstrated that no part of the evolution theory is true. The data and the facts say different, but then I don't suppose you deal with data and facts. The only thing that is true that is part of the evolution theory is natural selection. And natural selection can only ever act if there's variation. Which brings me on to microevolution. Ancient Egyptian drawings show us cheetahs and lions which means that your harebrained myth suggests that all microevolution took place between the Flood and ancient Egypt. Being generous, we will take the latter era of ancient Egypt, given 2,500 years of microevolution. How come we have seen no more change in these species 2,000 years further on? But natural selection is not a creative process. A change would have to take place for natural selection to make it prominent in a population. And there is no mechanism for the morphological, that is, the form and structural design change of life forms. The fossil record says different, but you're selectively blind to that fact. Only an idiot would demand a million-year-old process be repeated in the lab. You speak as if morphological change should be visible within a human lifespan. Most people are completely unaware of how thoroughly science has demonstrated that evolution is false. Watching anything by you, Hovind, Ham, etc. has strengthened my support of evolutionary theory. You have no science on your side. The Bible ge begins with these words. In the beginning, God created. And this is where it falls down immediately. Creation from an omnipotent superbeing should have been in a nanosecond. The argument as to whether a Genesis day is 24 hours or a million years is an irrelevancy within a book of myth. Their dating methods for dating rocks are based upon assumptions filled with circular reasoning. If only you would bother to watch the videos that utterly debunk that statement. Even if the methods were wrong by a factor of a thousand, it would still leave the earth as millions of years old. What dating methods do you have to support your Bronze Age myth? Because they do not understand that do not want to believe that the Bible is literally true. Correct. Why should I believe a proven work of fiction? Of course I don't want to believe in that stuff. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 4, And he answered them and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And you are unlikely to hear a better example of classic circular reasoning. Now, Jesus Christ, of course, was God manifest in the flesh. The Word become alive. So, all the times Jesus spoke to God in the New Testament, he was talking to himself? Male and female in the beginning. Evolutionists contend that gender, sex, male and female, is something which evolved early in the history of life. That's right. Evolved. Externally unobservable, minute changes occurring over time. He made them male and female, with the exception of his little examples of creativity with those few species which are 
genderless. Even if we don't know exactly how sex evolved, the fossil record shows us asexual life appearing before sexual life forms. Only evolution can explain that, and only evolution can explain the speciation of subsequent eukaryotic life forms. Mark 10, 6 states, But from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. More classic circular reasoning. Furthermore, science demonstrates that the idea that sex could evolve is preposterous because it would require morphological structures of the male and the female, which are completely different, to evolve so that they would be perfect matches for each other. The idea that random genetic mutations could create such a thing, two completely different sets of morphological features that just happen to be ideally designed for each other. A penis and vagina suddenly appearing out of nowhere? Such a scenario is more akin to creationism and has no place in evolution. Externally, there are more similarities than you may think, although I doubt if you have any experience. In both sexes, the areas become engorged in blood when aroused, with the clitoris expanding and becoming erect. Internally, it's easy to understand how organs could gradually evolve to favour those giving best protection to the embryo and fetus. God has spoken. Bloody hell, Neff. I thought it was you speaking. Romans 1 tells us a prophecy of the coming of evolution and that it's false. More circular reasoning, but why didn't Romans actually mention speciation by gradual change? It doesn't mention evolution really, does it, Neff? As well as twisting the words of scientists, you also twist your own holy book to suit your warped beliefs. They put the idea of evolution above God. They say, we are a product of natural processes only. There is no God. God and evolution are not mutually exclusive. We need no moral law from God. See, that's humanism, and that's part of worshipping the creature more than the creator. There are no definitive morals in the Bible, so we have to abide by humanist morals. And you cannot name one person who worships evolution or any of its supporters. You see, there is no God. But Allah? Is that what you were going to say, Neff?